Hi, this is Erin from The Impatient Gardener. So earlier this summer, I showed you planting up all of my containers around, um, around the yard. And I wanted to show you how they all turned out and kind of grade myself. I think I did really well with some and I think others, maybe not so much, something to work on for next year. Um, again, you know, sometimes when you plant a container, you envision something and it just doesn't really turn out that way for one reason or another. So I thought we'd just go through and I'm gonna give some grades on this. So the first one are the deck planters. There's two matching planters and I tie little strings to go up the pergola to have um, a little vine. Um, I'm really happy with how this one turned out because I think I kept it a little simpler than I have in the past. Uh, this uh, Mandevilla, um, my only complaint is that it hasn't flowered more. I think it's kind of just getting into it, which is unfortunate because summer's starting to sort of wind down here. So I wish it had gotten going a little quicker. Perhaps if I had bought more mature plants, I would see a few more blooms. But these blooms are huge, and I love them, and I think they're great. Um, over here, maybe the star of the show is this is Vermillionaire uh, Cupfia. I have to tell you, I was not convinced to use that plant. Uh, and someone said, just try it. You will have hummingbirds. And you know what? Every day, almost every day, especially lately, hummingbirds are at this plant. It is unbelievable. I'm trying to get a video of them, but those little buggers are quick. Um, this is um, a, a nice verbena. I wanted to get some cooler colors in here. And of course, lemon coral sedum has kind of filled in this whole thing, which I think is really nice. The only thing that I think, I always think a white plant might work good in here because we've got a lot of white going on this deck and it might tie it all in. Um, but I have a thing about white and orange together. I don't love it, and I don't know why. Maybe that's a personal thing. Anyways, so this is my first container that I'm going to show you, and I think we're going to give this one an A-. Um, I think maybe if there had been a little pop of white in there, maybe a fine texture, that might have been perfect. But overall, I'm really happy with how this one turned out, um, and A-. minus. Okay, so now we're next to the container by the garage, and this is almost an exact replica of what I planted here last year that I absolutely loved. And I think it turned out pretty good. It's growing okay. I have to tell you, I think this is a reason why maybe I shouldn't personally repeat the same containers multiple years in a row because I'm just not satisfied with it. This is Plectranthus, which I grew from seed. I love this plant, um, but you know what? I loved it last year in this container and I think I'd grow it again, but I maybe it would just put it in the ground because I think I just got kind of bored with this really muted palette over here. Um, there's Infinity White Impatience in here that are doing okay, not great. And the um, Dichondra Silver Falls is doing great. Um, one thing that I noticed that's going on here, um, I planted two new Clematis in here this year. Um, they are not happy. And you know what it is, is some of the trees that, are, that face this area um, have gotten a lot bigger this year. So last year when this was kind of just on the edge of part sun and I was able to grow clematis and it was beautiful. Um, this year there's too much shade. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig these clematis out. I'm going to repot them or replant them somewhere else in the garden and try to save them because there's no way they're unhappy now. There's no way they're going to make it through winter here. Um, and then I think next year I'm going to do something much more colorful over here. I have to figure out the vine situation. I really want a vine that's gonna grow up and kind of flop over the pergola on the garage. So I'll have to figure out what that's gonna be. Maybe it might be a different clematis because there are some clematis that do a little better in shade. Um, or maybe it's something else completely, but not happy with this one this year. Um, I'm actually gonna give this one a D, maybe a C minus, but I think we'll just say D, not happy with what happened here this year. Okay, so we're at the window box, and I have to tell you, I have never been happier with how my window box has turned out. Um, I love it this year. The star of the show is clearly the Supertunia honey. Why have I not paid attention to this plant before? I used to look at it in the nursery and think, uh, I don't know, it looks a little weird. I love it, because I don't know what color this is. Is it pink? Is it orange? Is it yellow? Is it apricot? I don't know, it's all of them, and I love it. Um, I actually wish I had done this video a week ago because the window box looked even better then, but I'm pretty damn happy with how it looks now. Um, the Super Tunia Indigo Charm is holding its own in there, looking great. I would say if I had two things I would wish would happen in here, um, I wish that the sweet potato vine would have draped a little bit more. I had envisioned that happening, and it's kind of starting to work out now. You know, there are so many plants crammed in here that I'm sure it's 
why it hasn't expanded more. And I wish that that Dichondrus over falls over there wasn't looking quite so pathetic because this one's looking pretty good. But I sort of envisioned, um, I sort of envisioned the sweet potato vine really popping here as well. You know what? I'm giving that a pass, and I'm giving this one an A. I'm thrilled with how this worked out, um, and really, the Verbena bonariensis meteor shower in the back, perfect plant because you know what? We can see even though it's taller, we can see through it out the window. And I'm just happy with how this one turned out this year. So now we're at the urn in the middle of the garden. Um, I really like this urn here. I think it's, I like having a pot right in the center of this garden as sort of a focal point. Um, but you know what? Things did not go well here. First of all, I will say, I, in theory, this was a good idea. So I'm giving my credit, myself credit for that. This is a cardoon in the middle. And cardoons have this sort of prehistoric look to them um, there's also a uh, super bells in here which has basically gone away and i'll tell you why in a second and then there's a few little um verbena bonariensis in here so in theory this would have been great and those annuals would have filled in and there would have been a lot of color and this striking architectural plants in the middle and then the height of this verbena bonariensis what ended up happening is this is actually a really small pot. I, I'll bet you this is, this is either 12 or 14 inches. And what happened is that cardoons are thirsty, hungry plants, and they will suck all of the resources out of this thing. I water this thing twice a day. It's still dry as a bone. Um, there was nothing left in it for those annuals to work. So the cardoon is stunted. It should be much bigger than it is. The annuals are essentially gone. And the Verbena bonariensis has sort of just become these kind of floppy sticks in the air. Um, I think the solution to this actually, this urn is actually completely cracked at the bottom. I think the solution is a different pot that's bigger here for next year. Um, and we're going to need more color here. I actually got a lot of heat for this on Facebook. I posted a picture of this area of the garden. People did not like this. Um, and that's okay. I kind of agree with them. I thought it was going to work. It didn't work out great. We're going to try something else next year in a bigger pot, I think. Uh, a D on this one. I'm not going to go F because I think F is only if it would be completely dead. It's not looking good. It's a D. We're by the big box by the front door. Um, this is a cool plant to do. There's so much space in here. I can do whatever I want. And the idea was that this was going to kind of mimic the urn in the middle of the garden or vice versa. So we've got Cardoon in here. We've got Verbena bonariensis. We've got beautiful Supertunia Bordeaux. Um, there's also Gara in here. And there's some purple sweet potato vine. And, of course, um, the Dichondra Silver Falls. So here's how I envision this going. Somehow I envision the... The verbena kind of coming up, sticking in the middle, kind of growing up through the cardoon. Um, and then the gara kind of circling that. And then the super tuner Bordeaux and the sweet potato vine kind of spilling over the sides. And that is not, a, as you can tell, it's not really what happened. Um, I'm okay with this. It's a little wild looking. And I'm sort of starting to like containers that look a little wilder and aren't so staid and formal. Um, but you know what? I really this year got into this silver foliage with purple thing. And I think I overdid it because I'm kind of sick of it. I sort of wish this had been brighter and maybe tied in some lime greens or something like that. And maybe I just got sick of that silver combination. Um, and I do love, I'm still a fan of the cardoon. And I know a lot of people don't like it. I think it's a great plant. Maybe next year I won't do it again though. So I will say though, Thank God for the Super Tunia Bordeaux because they are what's holding this baby together. So even though this is maybe not the best effort here and I maybe would like a another crack at it, I'm going to give this a C because I think it's okay. I think those Super Tunia Bordeaux are great, nice color, um, and it's a little wild and maybe we need a little bit of that. Okay, so these are new containers this year. These are matching containers I put on the corner of the driveway. And in terms of having containers in these places, I'm thrilled. I love it. I think it's a kind of nice way to draw people into the entrance. Um, it's a great excuse to have two more containers. Very happy with that. Um, conceptually, I think I was right on on this one. Um, so what we have going on here is really simple, and I want to keep it simple. I have kind of a cream-colored rose growing in the middle. It's called um, Windermere. It's another um, David Austin rose. 
The only problem is that it hasn't grown much this year. And of course, unfortunately, I'm shooting this when there's no blooms. Um, so that is a bit of a problem. Um, around that, we've got uh, the lobelia growing, which has done really well. And then we've got this silver licorice vine that went absolutely crazy. And I couldn't decide if I should trim it back pretty dramatically or if I should just leave it the way it is. I decided to just kind of leave it in this sort of cousin it mode. I actually think these planters would have been really nice if the roses had grown as much as I had hoped they would. I mean, I was hoping the roses would be up here and we'd have some height. Clearly they need height. Um, the roses also had a kind of a bad case of softfly larvae. So they've had a little bit of a tough time. Honestly, I think, in fact, I'm pulling one off of there right now. Ugh. Um, I'm having, they had a little bit of a tough time. I think I probably, I think they needed more water. This, I think they should have been watered a little bit more. I think that's why the roses are struggling a touch. Um, at the end of the year, the plan is take the annuals out, uh, pop these in the garage. I think they'll be fine. And I think in future years, these containers will be great. So um, I'm giving myself high marks on concept here. And I don't think anyone could have predicted that these roses weren't gonna grow um, much. So I'm giving myself a little bit of a pass on this one because I still love the idea of just a really simple gray and blue container with the white roses. Uh, so I'm actually gonna give myself a B on these. Um, and then with another, we'll try again next year. And I might actually do the same thing again next year, although um, I clearly maybe wouldn't have had to plant as much uh, silver licorice plant as I did. Um, so that's a B. Why are you always adjusting when I turn the recorder? It's like a thing. So that's how my containers did this year. You know, I love planting containers. It's my favorite part of gardening to do. And every year when things don't go right, I wish I could get another crack at it um, because it seems a little unfair that you only get kind of one chance to do it and then you don't really know how it's going to go. So um, I want to know how your containers grew this year. If you're happy with how they went or what things you might want to do differently for next year. Um, so let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. So have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.